Uh, I'm Jackson Burns. I'm the Redneck Archaeologist, and today we're going to be talking about rock and roll. And we're at the birthplace of rock and roll. Right behind me on this parking lot is right beside Cats. Uh, I got to tell you, Cats uh, Catering was the birthplace of rock and roll. We'll go into that here in a minute. On December 31st, 1930. A man by the name of Gory Carter was born. Now, he was born in Houston, Texas, and we're in Houston, Texas. We're on Westheimer. That is 608 Westheimer. Katz's is at 616 Westheimer. So we're at 616 and 608. And this parking lot, or in this lot right between the two buildings, was where Freedom Records was founded. Freedom Records was founded by Saul Cahal, Cahal, and they recorded the label's first release that was called Sweet Old Woman Blues. And then, as well as Carter, the band that was backed him, that they had working there, featured uh, two saxophones, a trumpet, piano, bass, and drums. Now, Carter's electric style, Gar Gloria Carter, uh, joined a jump blues band called the Hepcaps. That was his backup band. And then they signed for Freedom Records. And Freedom Records recording studio was right here on this vacant lot, where this vacant lot is right now. In 1949, at the age of 18, Gory Carter recorded his best known song, which is called Rock a Wild. And that was in April of 1949. And it has been cited as a strong contender for the title of the first rock and roll record. Uh, it beat, uh, and it's much more appropriate candidate than the more frequently cited Rocket 88, which was in 1951 by Ike Turner. The uh, Rock a Wild intro resembles a lot of uh, Chuck Berry records from 1955 onwards, so Chuck Berry probably took his rock and roll style and influence from Gloria Carter, which was from here. Now, Carter's electric guitar style was influenced by Aaron T-Bone Walker, uh, but was, he was, he, his style was more overdriven and had a rougher air, edge than what presaged the sound of rock and roll a few years later. Uh, he had single string uh, runs and two string blues notes, uh, chords, uh, which may have influenced Chuck Berry. So, most likely he did. Now, Gloria Carter quit music, the music industry. And he wouldn't go out very much at all anymore. Uh, I don't know why. You know, he probably got ripped off several times. <laughs> it is the music industry and the record industry. Now, Carter recorded for several labels in the 1950s, including Imperial, Coral, and Modern. But he lastly recorded in 1954. He continued to play occasionally in local gigs in this Houston area. And then he said it was visiting artist B.B. King and at one time uh, when B.B. came to Houston, but his last known performance was in 1970. He died in Houston at the age of 59 in 1990. Now, Gory Carter was a man who invented rock and roll, evidently, that Chuck Berry later was influenced by, and who knows, maybe I turn. This is where it happened site of Freedom Records, Houston, Texas, history unknown. I'm Jackson Burns, I'm the Redneck Archaeologist, I'm signing off from where rock and roll was born.